<clears throat> okay, so uh, today uh, I decided to show you guys how to do some memory editing in Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. It's one of my favorite games, so uh, there aren't that many resources out there um, except for uh, forums and wikis how to edit this game. So I haven't seen any videos that actually uh, showcase that. So today, uh, lucky for you, uh, I'll be showing you guys how to modify game values. So we've got here, we've got it set up. Um, okay, so let's jump right in. So first thing you'll need to understand is game in-game values are stored in hex form. Uh, in the simplest terms that I can explain is hex is the uh, the language, the, the programming language in which values are stored or identified in the game. So such as um, their hair color, uh, their sprite look, um, the item they have equipped, the skills they have, the stats they have, the level they have. Um, you know, all these, all these game values can be found and modified using, by looking at the, the memory codes. So in this particular case, uh, we have Ike's, uh, oh, by the way, sorry. You can find Gecko codes, of course, um, at the Gecko website. Um, and that is here, sorry, there. <clears throat> uh, the code database for Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. So you can find them at geckocodes.org. However, um, not all these codes will work. Um, because depending on the version of Dolphin that you use, of the emulator that you use, uh, the addresses can change. But more on that later. So now we're just looking at Ike's skill, sorry, Ike's skill modifier. So you can see Ike's skill modifier. Um, we'll just input the address here at the search field. And you'll find that the value of that address is 8070F9F4, which is his skill called Aether. So that's the that's the that's the value of the skill itself. So that's Aether. <clears throat> we can go ahead and change that into something like uh, maybe Eclipse. We can change it to an Eclipse. So all we did is copy that value pasted it and paste it at the memory editor or viewer set it and look um, and there you have it it's Eclipse um, let's go ahead and change that back to his original skill oh. and it's back to his original skill Aether um, you can do this for a lot of of, of all the all, all the all the other skills of the characters, um, so as you can see, I've done it for everyone. <laughs> it's just very enjoyable to solve um, these types of uh, problems in the game, in which you figure out um, how to modify their stats or their parameters. It's an exercise in uh, <laughs> mind aerobics, I guess. <clears throat> Another thing that you can modify is the actual value of the of the skill cost. So in this case, we need to. Okay, so originally the cost of Aether is thirty, thirty capacity points, uh, but you can modify that. Uh, just right below the skill address is the parameters of the skill in terms of the cost and how it appears in the uh, skill window. Uh, in this case, it's it's F four F eight, um, and we can modify that to zero 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 three and then four zeros afterwards to lock the skill as 
as well as to remove the cost for the capacity. You can do this for all the skills. So this is nihil. Uh, you can do that as well. So it's a value is three. Uh, let's go look at vantage. Vantage is, I think, this one. Five one four. Okay. Five one four, uh, and then five eight is the parameters of that skill. Let's go ahead and change that. You'll see that it'll lock in, and the cost should disappear. Oh, sorry, that's cancel. We just did it for cancel, um, and for Vantage is Vantage is five ten. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> so we're slowly clearing out the cost for the skills. Um, you may also notice that the game has more allows you more than six skills. This is so that the game can can allot certain characteristics to the character, such as female units, or if it's Lagoos, uh, or <clears throat> if it's a boss type, uh, or certain passive abilities in the game that aren't, they, that you aren't, you're not normally able to modify uh, from, the, from the manage menu, from the, uh, yeah, from the management, skill management window. Next thing I'd like to point out um, is editing items. So items is just right below the skill skill list. Let's go and take a look at that again. Okay, so right below the skill list, you have the items, which is right. Here, there you go. Five six C, and this value corresponds to the sword. Um, you can change that back to his original sword. Oh, not this one. There you go, Ragnall. So we set the address back to Ragnall, and the item is blessed. So. How to modify that is the address right below it, which is 570. And we just change that to a 278. Five zeros. And it becomes a normal weapon. And to make it back, make it blessed, just change the value to 9, the third digit. Another thing that you can modify are the parameters, or sorry, the values of the stat boosting items. So in this case, we have the serif. Let's look at serif because that's what the what the code, what Gecko codes gives you. The address for serif, uh, and below that should be a few lines below that should be the the um, address for energy drop. So let's copy that 0101233. I've actually modified this already previously. Um, so what it does is it modifies the amount of strength that energy drop gives. In this case, we can make it 3, it becomes 12. Four, it becomes 16, 5, it becomes 20, and so on. In this case, let's just put it to 2 or 3. Notice that if I've also equipped the stat boosting item so that it gives the stat uh, as it is on the in the inventory of the character. Normally, you're not able to equip these stat boosting items. But you can do so um, in the item slot memory. So let's go ahead and look at that again. Oops, sorry about that. My skill modifier. So the item is here. That's the item, item slot number one, slot number two, steel axe, slot number three, root all gem, slot number 
so the value for an equipped item is 2, 7, and blessed is 9, pretty much. And you can do this for all the other, you know, all the other items. Um, if you go back to Seraph, uh, all the other stats, I mean, Seraph. Let's go ahead and look at energy drop once more. We can actually change, um, for example, the defense value. Not 7.4, let's go to 7.8. Let's change that, let's change that to 19. Uh, it gives plus 4. And 2 gives plus 8. And 5 gives, yeah, higher and higher values. So if we can modify that, if we change the address line below, oh, above, sorry. 0101010101. Let's see what it does. So it gives plus four. So this is magic, this is skill, this is speed, and this is luck. So you can just play around with these values to your heart's content and enjoy the game. Um, so, yeah, uh, what else? What other values can I show you? Um, I think that's pretty much it. You just need the skill codes um, and the item codes, and you just need the gecko codes from the gecko website, the address pointers for the skills, XP, um, items, uh, item slots, weapons, and uh, consumables, and stat boosters, and all that. And you can edit basically anybody. One thing that you may find when you try to input these codes, uh, the values may change depending on the version of, of the emulator that you use. So these codes are not always uh, direct portable, uh, oh, sorry, direct injectable into the game. So you have, to, you have to be able to scroll through the code and look for the address. So for example, in this case, um, Let's look at Ranulf. Sorry. Ranulf here has a skill modifier address that actually uh, leads to or directs to Kaiza. So let's take a look at that. In the Gecko Codes list, Ranulf's address, this is Ranulf's address. If you put it in and try to modify it, you will end up modifying Kaiza's skills. So Let's take a look. This value should be nihil. Let's give him rent. Let's give him rent. Paste that value and nihil becomes rent. Let's let's bring that back to nihil. So you may have to do some manual uh, searching. Uh, scrolling through the code just to find out um, whose address you're modifying if it doesn't modify the intended uh, character. Another thing that you can do with the skills is to modify their cost for the capacity. So this is C8, I believe, which is below the skill pointer. So you can change it so that it goes to the default. Yeah, and the skill cost for Nihil is 20. You can remove that by setting it to triple zero, three, and then four zeros afterwards. It locks it in place, the skill, and it removes the skill cost. So those are the some of the things that you can you can do with the, the game that you can modify. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, tutorial on how to modify. Radiant Dawn game values, skills, and items, and uh, enjoy reminiscing the game. Until next time, guys.